Welcome to Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Coslett and I am on the set at the Culinary Arts Institute on the campus of Luzerne County Community College in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania. Joining me is registered dietitian Roseanne Winsek. Hi, Roseanne. Hi, thank you for having me here today on your program. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Roseanne plans on taking us down a little bit of a different road tonight. She's going to talk about healthy grains. And what she's done in the length of her career is mix the art of cooking with the science of nutrition. And your story really begins right here, doesn't it, at Luzerne County Community College? Yes. After I well, I had completed my nutrition degree, but then I became very interested in the aspects of food because many of my patients were concerned that good food would not be appetizing. So I began taking some courses here and increased my skills in cooking and how to apply layering of different flavors along with healthful ingredients to illustrate to my patients that it can be done. That's, that is so good and it's really important because not only is it great for some of your patients and some of the diabetic patients that you deal with, but all, it's for all of us, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you, you really always hear that in reverse, so that tasted so great, it must be awful for me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is commonly what, what mm -hmm. I do here. So tell me about some of your patients in the diabetic education that you're interested in. I became a certified diabetes educator mm -hmm. in the early 90s because we have a high percentage of, mm -hmm. of people with diabetes in the area. So I went for some advanced training so that I can provide them with a more specialized care. And in the past year and a half, we have begun using a teaching kitchen to mm -hmm. illustrate foods and many of the recipes are suitable for people with diabetes. Okay. So are you talking mostly about adults? And the only reason I ask that is I would think that it would be really important that you teach adults with diabetes how to cook healthy foods that taste good because isn't it the risk of their children being diabetic? Yes, much it is. greater. Yes, if one okay. parent has diabetes, um, a child runs a 50% risk yeah. of that's having high, diabetes also. Yeah, that's really high. Okay, healthy grains tonight. So scrambled egg burritos and... And we're going to do a hot oat and quinoa cereal. Okay, I can't wait. I love breakfast foods. It's actually my favorite, you know. <laughs> and it's one of the most important meals of the day that you should not skip. Huh. So stay with us. We're going to talk breakfast when we return. Hello, I'm Erica, a culinary student here at Luzerne County Community College with your culinary tip of the day. Here at the Culinary Institute, we use all different kinds of lettuce with different flavors and textures. These are some things that you have to think about when creating your own salads at home. First is your iceberg lettuce, which is known for its crisp texture and natural flavor. You can use this for salads, sandwiches, and garnishing. Here we have a heart of lettuce salad, which is good for like a first course maybe or a side salad for your meal. Next is your romaine lettuce, which is known for its crisp texture and it's very on the bitter side. You can use this for our toss salads, cooked salads, and for my personal favorite, your Caesar salad. And here's your generic Caesar salad with the romaine lettuce, the Parmesan cheese, and some croutons. Last is your Boston bib lettuce, which is very fluffy and has a soft texture. You can use this for lettuce cups to present your other salads. And here is a Boston bib salad with some, some fruit on it. As you can see, you can use these as cups to put other things. It makes for a really good presentation. And that's your culinary tip of the day. Bon appetit. Welcome back to Cooking Classic. I'm glad you stayed with us because uh, registered dietitian Roseanne Winsek is about to make a hot oat and quinoa cereal. Why quinoa? Where did this come in? Quinoa, although relatively new on the market mm -hmm. in this country, has been grown in South America for upwards of 4,000 years. Oh my gosh. It's been a staple of, this, of the Inca okay. diet for that long of a period of time. It's great as far as a source of protein. It's got many minerals, it's high in potassium, high in magnesium, so it 
provided the population with a great benefit of good nutrition at a relatively cheap price. And it's actually, even though we classify it or call it a grain in this country, mm -hmm. it's actually a seed. I was wondering about that because we eat a lot of this in my house and I, you know, everybody says it's a grain, it's a grain, and I thought this doesn't taste like a grain. No, it's, it's actually a seed. Okay. Um, now when you buy it in the store, it comes most commonly in the white mm -hmm. form. In the natural state, it has a bitter coating on it called saponin. Most of the quinoa in our markets have been rinsed to take away. That is a bitter coating on the seed. Does that do anything to the nutrients or any, or not? It no. just makes it taste better. Right. Um, it's a natural protective mechanism in the wild because of the bitter taste with that original coating on. Birds do not eat the seeds. No, isn't that interesting? So it allows for greater yields, but what's available on the market, I still would rinse it off anyway. Okay. Now what about, like you have a multicolored quinoa here. I bought the red the other day and my children asked me not to buy that again, that they weren't crazy about the taste. That doesn't have anything to do with that coating that you're talking about? No, no? It, ha it has to do um, with the type of plant. The red quinoa tends to be stronger tasting, more okay. nuttier tasting, and some people don't like that component of it. All right. Now, why did you decide to mix quinoa with oats? Oats is a traditional, familiar food. Mm -hmm. Quinoa is a very new food. So it's a great way to introduce okay. people to a new food by combining it with something that's comforting and homey. It's really smart. It really is to, to break into the new thing a little bit at a time, do it a little easy. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to be actually boiling everything, simmering everything together. And about how, man, how much do you have there? We of have the a half oats. a cup of oats and the quinoa because I did soak it and rinse it, it did puff okay. up a little bit so that's why that looks like a little bit more. All right. Thank and you. And you won't be needing this one now, No, right? I brought that. Now I have cinnamon as the flavoring agent uh -huh. in this. Cinnamon provides a natural sweetness oh, it to does? the product. Yes, it does provide natural sweetness. You can also use nutmeg. That mm -hmm. would be a nice ingredient okay. in with this. If you like more cinnamon, certainly this is something that you can adjust. Okay. Along with it, I'm adding dried fruit. Dried fruit is concentrated, so therefore it gives a natural sweetening okay. ability to it. I, I like dried fruits in my cereals too. I do that all the time. It's just, yeah. it's just a great, and you're also adding a, a fruit component mm -hmm. to your cereal. I have a mix of cherry flavored craisins and blueberries today. Oh, all right, that sounds great. Blueberries are my favorite. I think I told you that earlier, so it's kind of funny that that's what you decided to bring. So we're just going to give this a stir and let it simmer until the grains absorb all of the water. The dried fruit will mm -hmm. plump up. Okay. And you can smell the nice cinnamon. It really does. It does. It, does. it smells very good. This is a breakfast item that you can also make the night before okay. and reheat the next day by adding a little additional water or I, milk to it. Yeah, I was going to say, when I do that, because of working and everything, I actually make a lot and then I keep it in the refrigerator so all I have to do in the morning, you know, when that alarm goes off at 5 or 5.30, is grab it, it's already made. So it, it does, it works well. Sometimes even like other leftovers, I think it tastes a little better. Yes, yeah. the flavors get more of a chance mm -hmm. to go through it. The nice thing too about the quinoa having a higher protein level, it has about 11 grams of protein in a half okay. a cup of quinoa, um, is that that digests a little slower, so it tends to stay with you longer, longer, so you don't feel as hungry as quickly. What about the sodium contents in some cereals and other things? I would imagine that this is very low in sodium, so it's really good for you with yes. the protein and the low sodium? Yes, our recipe only calls for just a pinch of kosher salt, and the reason why I choose kosher salt is because the flavor is much more pronounced with a lesser amount in oh, it. Oh, all right. Uh, okay. A serving of this actually is only 127 milligrams wow. of sodium. Um, uh -huh. Anything considered low is below 140. All right, that's what I was just going to ask you, really. How much sodium should we be eating in a day, even? Um, they had come out with new standards mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago um, that actually lowered um, the sodium level for people with high blood pressure, people over the age of 50, African-American population. They would like to see their sodium intake 
down to 1500 milligrams of sodium per day, which can be very difficult if you mm. eat processed foods. I was just going to say that if you look yes. on any of those frozen foods yes. that you bop in the microwave, the sodium levels are really high. Yes. A typical American diet can contain anywhere from 4,000 to 6,000 oh milligrams of sodium. And it doesn't necessarily come from adding the salt at the table. It comes from the processed foods. That's what I was just going to say. So a lot of that is really hidden. We really need to relabel, don't we? Yes. We really need to take a, an active role in watching what we're eating. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're restricting sodium, you want to try mostly to select those foods that are under 140 milligrams of okay. sodium per serving. But this would be a great option because it is low in sodium. And then also lower in sugar, so it's good for your diabetic patients um, because you're using the natural sugars from the fruit? It will still count as a carbohydrate because it is a fruit, but you're not adding a lot of the additional sugar to okay. it. Okay. So, All right. Certainly. So while that's cooking, why don't we mix the salsa up for our next dish, which is going to be the scrambled egg burritos. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if you'd like to hand me the bowl, Kathy, we're going to start <laughs> that would with help, wouldn't it? how we're going to be <laughs> mixing it. Okay. First ingredient, I have chopped tomatoes. Okay. Um, I chose a traditional red tomato. Now, yep. homemade salsa is a great item to make in the mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of your local fresh tomatoes. They have come back in style what are called heirloom tomatoes. Right. Um, you're not going to see those in your commercial stores because they have very sensitive growing requirements. Okay. So uh, larger manufacturers are not going to be carrying those types of tomatoes, okay. but you can find those at some of your local farmer's market. And they all have a little bit of a different color, texture, yeah, they, they have zebras, they have pinks. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> they are just absolutely wonderful. Now, if you're sensitive to the acid in tomatoes, you can make a salsa with the yellow tomatoes because they do have a lower acid content. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, that's good to know. So that's good to know. But we have the chopped tomatoes. We have some bell pepper. This might sound silly, but how might someone know if they're sensitive to the acid in tomatoes? Usually when you eat it, um, you tend to experience a lot of indigestion okay. after, afterwards. Okay. And for a little spike, I did chop up some jalapeno peppers. For a little spice. A did little you see spice. Those? Okay. And then the herb I'm adding to the salsa is going to be a cilantro. That's a classic mm -hmm. herb that mm -hmm. is used in salsas. Salsa is actually the number one condiment in the country. Is it really? Yes. That's another thing that um, my children eat a lot of, salsa. Salsa is a great accompaniment with a lot of mm -hmm. foods. Um, you can also make salsas out of fruit. Ooh. Pineapples, tropical mangoes, oh, that's uh, a good peaches. Idea. Um, okay. They make nice um, flavorful fruit mm -hmm. salsas. They're a good component with meat, pork, mm -hmm. chicken, fish. I like it in eggs. Yes. I do. I love it in eggs. It's, it's a great mm -hmm. accent to eggs. But the nice thing about using a salsa with a chicken or a fish is that you don't require the heavy butter sauce okay. with it. So you can use this as the flavoring okay. agent um, as opposed to having a fat containing item. And it's a way to work in a vegetable also. Mm -hmm. Um, salsas traditionally usually have to have some type of an acid in it. Mm -hmm. It's usually uh, lime juice, but certainly lemon juice can work just and as well. And why is that? Does that help bring out the flavors? Yes. Acids um, in foods will help bring out the flavors. Okay. So that's another way that you can enhance the flavor without adding salt to it. I was just going to say that. So no salt, no pepper. This is it. This is it. Now certainly if you want a little salt or pepper mm -hmm. that you certainly can add that into it. but Usually this is made about an hour or so ahead of time mm -hmm. just to allow the flavors to combine together very well. And I would think absolutely no calories in this, so eat away. <laughs> probably a half a cup is only going to contain probably about 15 or 20 oh calories. Oh my gosh, isn't so. that the best? We all better love salsa, right? Yes. <laughs> salsa yes. is it. <laughs> okay. And the advantage of using the homemade, of course, as we talked about earlier, would be the sodium. Okay. This will be extremely low in sodium, probably less than 40 milligrams of sodium in the whole oh recipe. Oh boy, so this is definitely the ticket. Yes. 
All right, well, while our hot cereal is cooking, we're gonna let that cook. Our salsa is ready. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna make those scrambled egg burritos. We'll see you in a minute. Are you looking for a college that's right for you? Luzerne County Community College has more than 100 majors to choose from, convenient class times, and many online courses. Transfer your degree and continue your education at a four-year college. Work with modern equipment found in the professional world, all at the area's lowest tuition. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. Classic and Roseanne is about ready to make those scrambled egg burritos. First thing we're going to do is brush the pan with a little bit of olive oil okay. just to keep it from sticking. Some people can use nonstick sprays, mm -hmm. but you have an, an oil and a brush, you're not putting that much on anyway. So I'll just give that to you. Do you think that adds to a little bit of the flavor? Not really. It's just. Oh, I think it does. Yeah. It, it certainly has a little flavor. Now, our components that we're sauteing first are going to be a bell pepper. I chose red, and I was able to find a purple one. <laughs> She's so, really excited about so, that purple yes. pepper, too, right? So, <laughs> it really looks nice. I can see why. Definitely oh, for go. some color. Mm -hmm. So we're going to saute the vegetables up for about two to three minutes um, just to let them cook a little bit because we don't want them to be mm -hmm. as raw with the egg component. Okay. I have uh, five pieces of scallion and they're good too, that I chopped they? up or green onion, mm -hmm. same thing. Why did you decide to use a green onion rather than a regular onion or a Vidalia or whatever? A uh, scallion is milder in flavor. Okay. So for those individuals that do mm -hmm. not like that much of an onion, this presents a milder taste. And we're going to toss in a little bit of red pepper flakes. Oh, that looks good. And the reason why we're adding the red pepper flakes in with the sauteing, because you're actually going to toast them and it's going to bring out the flavor more. Okay. When you're trying to watch your salt intake and all of those other things, is it good then to add some other spices to make up for the lack of the salt? Absolutely. Does that really help? Yes, you think? it does. It does. Very much so. And you know what? People should really give it a little while, too, shouldn't they? Because you really have to get used to the different tastes, right? It actually takes at least three months to get accustomed wow. to not using salt. So okay. a lot of individuals start with the gradual approach, mm -hmm. such as just not salting at the table, but perhaps okay. keeping the same amount of salt in the cooking. Once they get accustomed to that, then gradually reducing that. All right. And so that would be your advice, too. Yes. Don't go cold turkey, so to speak, because it's a recipe for disaster, correct? Well, from a taste standpoint, because yeah. you just may not like it. Right. Okay. So that's cooking up and smelling really yeah, nice. Yeah, it really is. The and great thing about having the vegetable component in this is, again, it enhances the nutritional value uh, of yeah. the egg. Mm -hmm. So the egg, that, the egg product rather that we're going to be using this evening is an egg substitute which is uh -oh. actually egg whites it's actually colored egg whites, egg whites? now yes. did you make this on your own or did you purchase this already made no i purchased this already made um, okay. in the carton but way back years ago when i was in training <laughs> we're not going to tell you when we're not going to tell when dinosaurs were not walking the earth at that time <laughs> Um, that we would separate eggs and add a little bit of food coloring and oil to it to make our huh. own egg substitute. How about that? So you really could do that if you wanted to. Yes, you could. Um, and the yellow is coloring is just mainly for eye appeal. Right. Um, some people don't mind just eating plain egg whites. Egg other whites, other right. people are, are adverse to it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have to be careful with egg substitutes to make sure there's nothing else in there but eggs, or are they all pretty natural? It's all pretty, pretty natural. natural. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to get all the protein because the protein in an egg in an egg is always in the white and it's an excellent source of protein. Okay. So how much protein are we supposed to have in a day? Um, it actually is based on your on your weight. on your ideal body weight. Uh. 
ideal um, body weight? Is that the one we want to have or the one <laughs> that we have? <laughs> yeah, we actually um, determine protein. We actually do what your suggested weight should be, okay. and we actually convert it over to metric to kilograms, and okay. we determine it that way. Um, is, um, is that really as crucial to one starting out watching their diet as sodium intake, carbohydrate, and all of that? Well, proteins um, can add calories. Okay. So the average adult, unless you're doing heavy lifting or um, say um, doing a lot of intensive exercise, mm -hmm. Usually around, for men, around six to seven ounces of protein a day hmm. is fine for women around four. Hmm. That's for, not really a whole lot, is it? No. So um, like in one serving, how many grams of protein would there be in this scrambled egg? Um, well, this is actually four servings. Um, okay. So one egg would have approximately seven grams of protein okay. in it. All right. um, in this country, we tend to plate up with the protein being the emphasis of the right. plate. Whereas with the new my plate, um, mm -hmm. half the plate should be your vegetable component, then your portion of protein, okay. and then whatever your carbohydrate is. I just is. saw that on another show that I was watching, a weight loss program, where they actually singled the uh, person out for having too much protein. What happened to everything else? You're missing yes. everything else you're that you're supposed to be else. eating. But that is just um, something we've gotten accustomed to in this country. Um, a three ounce size of protein is about the size of a deck of cards. Oh my goodness, I overeat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guess already? <laughs> That's not very much, at least it seems like not very much. So are we all used to eating larger portions than we're supposed to? Um, it's something in the years and over the years that we've coined a term called portion distortion. <laughs> <laughs> um, where bagels traditionally were very oh, small right. size bagels, no. and now they're, they're very yeah, large size bagels. Um, so, and we eat the whole thing. We don't share it, do we? Exactly. Even some of the bottles of soft drinks, mm -hmm. they're upwards of 20 ounces, whereas a serving right. is eight. And some individuals think that 20 ounces is, is the, the full serving. Okay. So this is setting up nicely. We're going to throw a little bit of parsley in here. You have your choice of parsley or cilantro in here, but since we have cilantro in the salsa, mm -hmm. I decided just to use okay. the parsley it's in this ingredient. very pretty. Yes, very colorful. Mm -hmm. So we're going to plate this up in a brown tortilla, okay. whole wheat. I have that warming in the oven, so okay. I'm going to Pull one of those out from the oven. Okay. So now you just have to warm these in the oven, correct? That is they correct. really don't have to be cooked or anything. Now you brought um, brown rice, didn't you? Or a, yes. a rice tortilla? Yes, this is a gluten free tortilla. Okay, good. Um, I, I get to taste tonight. Yes. Now, is there any um, added nutritional value to a, a rice tortilla? than to a wheat tortilla? Well, it's going to be a different grain. So there's going to be mm -hmm. different nutrients in it by virtue of being a different grain. But the fact that it's brown rice, obviously it's going to make it a little bit better than if it okay. was a refined white rice. Okay. okay. So we're going to just... I didn't even know they sold those. Yeah. I better get out there and pay attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have a part skim milk cheddar cheese that's going to melt into it. Oh, that looks delicious. And we're going to just kind roll of roll that, that up. up. Now, if you don't want to heat in the microwave, you can heat a tortilla, I mean, rather in the oven, you can heat it in the microwave okay. between damp paper towels. Okay. okay. All right. And when we return, we're going to get all of this plated up, add the salsa, take a taste, and you're going to love it. Don't go away. Hi, my name is Amber, a student here at Luzerne County Community College with your culinary tip of the day. Today we are blanching and we are blanching green beans. So first we're going to take our green beans and place them into boiling water. These are going to go for about a minute or so. And a tip on blanching is that when you blanch something it helps keep their bright beautiful color and also keeps them nice and crisp. 
So when they're in the water for about a minute, take them out. It's a very quick process. The water helps shock and keep their nice color. And then you're done. And when you want to serve them, saute them with a little butter and your favorite herbs, and you're ready to go. I hope this tip helped you out, and that's your culinary tip of the day. It's a good thing you stayed with us because we're just about to have breakfast here on Cooking Classic. So if you want to finish up that burrito and tell us a little more about it, this is one serving, correct? Yes, this is one serving. Um, it has your egg, your protein. We have our carbohydrate with the brown rice tortilla, tortilla and vegetables. We're going to garnish it with just a little bit of scallion. And here comes and, that salsa. And a little bit of the salsa on the side. So there really is no need even for anything else with this. This is it. This is breakfast. This is this how is many great. calories, and it's it for the morning? Um, I would suggest adding a fruit in with okay. this. Um, the tortilla is a larger size tortilla, so it's certainly the carbohydrate would mm -hmm. be fine in that. But adding a fruit to it would be great. Now, this would also be a nice lunch meal, yeah, it too. Would. You're right. Um, not necessarily that it needs to be a traditional breakfast food because okay. it is eggs. All right, next up, and this smells really good, and it's one of my favorites. And again, Roseanne brought along my favorite fruit, blueberries. They're in the cereal, and we can garnish with that, too, she says. Now, that's delicious. Now, what's a typical serving size? What's, what's well, the portion that um, we should be eating? Well, the portions on this are a half a cup, and that would be if you're having some additional bread, you know, with okay. the meal. But if you're only having this as a cereal, certainly a cup would not be an issue. Well, that's good news. <laughs> So we're going to garnish it with a little bit of toasted almonds. Now that looks good. And I do like to toast nuts because it brings out the natural oils and okay. flavors in them. Take those. And I usually choose nuts in the baking aisle because they're not salted, they're plain. Oh, so then okay. it makes it nicer. And we'll that just a good tip. And we will just throw a few little blueberries, blueberries. on there. And there you have a grain breakfast with some protein and your fruit and a little bit of nuts for crunch. Thank you very much, Chef. And I really hope that you'll all try this at home because it looks delicious, it's good for you. What more can you ask for? It smells great too. So thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time on Cooking Classic. I really like this one. And this one too.